Hey guys, Justin Bryant here from selfmadesuccess.com. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 of the best small business ideas for beginners in 2018. So these are businesses that will help you along as far as becoming an entrepreneur for the first time or succeeding for the first time, but still kind of remove a lot of the headaches that typically go with running your own business, allow you to kind of get into things uh, gradually instead of just jumping in the fire and starting something with employees and a, a lease and, you know, having to get things manufactured or get inventory. You don't have to do a lot of that stuff. So the easiest businesses possible for beginners basically are the ones I'm going to kind of show you and some of the places you can go to get started. So the first thing is first, um, I want to give you a quick tip. When you are starting out for your first business, as somebody who's had to do this and learn the hard way myself, I recommend you start on a platform like a YouTube or a you know, certain type of site for the type of business that you want to do. For instance, if you want to start a YouTube channel, um, YouTube's great because they take care of all that stuff for you. You don't have to worry about customer support. You don't have to worry about how you're getting um, ads on your videos. You don't have to worry about a lot of things. So you want to do different types of platforms that can help you instead of having to start from scratch and deal with a lot of customer support, setup, inventory, shipping, manufacturing, um, stuff like that. So handyman and errand work. That's one thing that you can do pretty easily and get started in as a business. If you're somebody who's pretty good around the house or maybe you're uh, an electrician for a living or you've been a carpenter or a welder or whatever, you're good with tools, you're good with fixing things, you're good at building things, you're good at stuff like that. Um, we all know somebody like that, it seems like. But those types of skills seem to be getting less and less common. You know, um, us millennials tend to not know how to do anything. So you can be a handyman or do some errands for people. There's a few platforms I recommend for this. One is TaskRabbit. You can go there, get work like moving, general handyman services. You might put in a light fixture or something for somebody, assemble furniture, do some yard work, um, mounting and installing stuff, home improvement, stuff like that. So you they describe the task, you get matched with somebody, obviously you have a profile, it'll have like your picture and reviews of your work. You get it done, um, typically there'll be somebody very close by to where you live, and then you get paid. So it's kind of a peer-to-peer -peer network type thing, and then they take a small fee, TaskRabbit does, for kind of getting everything set up for you. It's on an app, kind of like Uber or something like that is on an app. You can get it for your Android or Apple device. You can see the different locations, mostly major cities in the United States. So you can cover a lot of those different types of things there. Another one is handy.com. If you want to focus on handyman type work, um, you might need somebody to clean for you. You might need uh, somebody to assemble furniture, mounting TVs, uh, hanging stuff up, setting up a smart home, that type of stuff. So they're kind of a, a competitor of TaskRabbit. They also have an app for these with the, the profiles of the workers and the jobs available, where they're located, all that stuff is in the app. So that is at handy.com or you can just get it in your app store. Last but not least for this uh, type of job, Tackle is another one, T-A-K-L. You can get the app for your phone, whatever device you have, and you have handyman work, house cleaning, junk removal, you might haul stuff off for people, you might run errands for people, you might do some yard work and stuff like that. So those three are the um, probably most trafficked apps and websites for finding this type of work. So you can get that for your 
phone. Next is freelance and guest writing. So if you're pretty good at writing, it's not too hard to find gigs. One place is problogger.com slash jobs. They have a job section here. If you just go to problogger.com, you can click the job section. And they have all kinds of jobs that you can do anywhere. Typically, um, telecommute, meaning you can work from home, you can work while you're traveling, you can work in the local coffee shop, whatever you want to do, and get your writing done. You might write for sports, you might write about TV shows, you might write about gaming, you might write about business. There's a lot of different things that you could do. Some of them even are um, full-time jobs, part-time jobs, but a lot of it is like freelancing and stuff like that. So if you need like jobs uh, in particular, you know, that last few months or just one job at a time, this is a great place to look for writing only jobs that you do from home. I also have an article uh, with 15 websites that pay you $200 or more to write a blog post for them. So you're basically a guest writer. So if you can do like Photoshop tutorials, the travel writer's life, blog posts, cracked, treehouse, um, you know, all these different websites here, you can look them up. I have a page that'll be in the show notes for you and you can find some very high paying websites that will do guest posts. Meaning you have like a little profile, you write on their website but you're not necessarily somebody who works for them or is a part of the company. And then last but not least is HireWriters.com, which is a great place to just get, um, you know, a lot of different kind of random assignments. You log in, you uh, create an account with them as a writer, and then you can uh, get paid to write. You can just click that or just go straight to this page. I'll have a link directly to this page anyway in the show notes. And then you get paid to write all kinds of different blog posts and stuff like that. And you just kind of see what jobs are available. So another thing you can do is become a driver. So there's a lot of different types of um, businesses that have gotten into this lately. So uh, one thing you can do is Uber. Um, this is the Uber Eats page. So you could try Uber Eats if you want to deliver food meaning somebody gets the app, you may have used it yourself, you uh, set up, you have your credit card on the app and everything, so all you have to do is see which places will deliver to where you are. You have a delivery fee. I think the maximum delivery fee is usually like $7 or something like that. It kind of depends on how far you live away from the main part of town. But um, Uber Eats, allows drivers to just pick up the food order under the name of whoever put place the order you bring it to the doorstep of that person and then you get paid a certain amount and then a tip so i think the tip is either like two four or six dollars no matter what something like that and then um so you can get paid doing that just deliver food to people if you don't want to do that, you can take people from point A to point B, which is kind of how this industry started with Uber and Lyft. They are kind of a freelance taxi type service where if you have a four-door car of some sort that's in good shape, you can take them from you know, the airport to their house or from the city to you know, another location, whatever. So you just take people from point A to point B instead of food from point A to point B. The last one is Amazon Flex, which takes a package from point A to point B. So you, we all know those brown boxes that have our Amazon and you know other orders and stuff in them when we get something uh, bought and delivered to our house um, from the internet. Amazon Flex allows you to get paid like $20 an hour just to um, deliver Amazon boxes from their fulfillment centers to people's doorsteps. And all it is is just a brown box. You don't even have to interact with people. So, um, you know, with Lyft or regular Uber, you'll definitely have to interact with people a little bit, most likely. You'll be driving them around. So if you feel like you're not a very social person, you might be better off doing Uber Eats where you just kind of say, hi, here's your food, bye. Or 
you don't have to say anything at all. You just put the package on the doorstep and leave um, if you're doing Amazon Flex. Next is a photographer. You don't have to be a uh, you know super um, professional photographer to make money these days because we have apps like Fope that allow you to post the the images you've already taken on your phone to the app of Fope. You can get on your Apple or Android device and it allows you to basically um, make $5 per download of your photos that you post on there. So it helps brands, it helps businesses, it helps others um, who need photos and um, are looking to you know the crowds for helping them find the right photos that they need and they are willing to pay you for them it's completely free to sign up like I said we take po we take pictures with our phones anyway this is a way for you to make money from them clash shot is a competitor of Fope. they allow you to set your price that's pretty much the difference and then um, I think it only sells one time though I don't unless they recently added an option where you can sell it multiple times you sell a photo for a specific price, they get the rights to that photo. Um, you can sell it for 50 cents to $80 uh, per photo. It's also available on Apple and Android devices. So that's an app. You can get ClassShot and Fope on your phone if you want. And Shutterstock, you know, iStock Photo, these different sites like this that you've probably heard of or seen in Google image results, they are the more professional versions. They might take a bigger cut of your earnings, but they have a lot of traffic and a lot of businesses that look for photos here. So you could just click become a contributor on Shutterstock or another one of those other major photo sites and sign up and start uploading photos, hopefully earning commissions. But it's kind of a volume game. The more images you can get up there you know, of scenery, of people doing something like working or having fun doing something those types of things lead to more sales next is a designer or artist so you can make money doing this by uh, doing sites like 99 designs 99 designs allows you to basically compete with other designers or get a solo um, design job where you design food truck wraps you design labels for products you design logos you design apparel and all kinds of stuff typically for businesses so you could sign up at 99designs.com and uh, go down to the bottom where it says become a designer right here to sign up as a designer where you kind of prove yourself and it attracts a lot of very wealthy clients so you should be able to make some good money if you're a good designer um, Etsy of course you can create your own little art store online and sell stuff to people you can sell like art prints via direct download and that would allow you to um, sell things with for, for more of a passive income you don't have to print things off or ship it to people or pack it or any of that stuff otherwise if you sell like you know framed photos or you sell custom jewelry and stuff like that you will have to figure out a way to ship the items and stuff like that but um, Etsy is a great place to sell your art and custom handmade apparel and stuff like that Teespring allows you to design t-shirts and other things like phone cases and other apparel and stuff like that to uh, sell online but you don't have to get it manufactured normally and in fact they allow you to sell the design and then Teespring itself will print it off and sell it and ship it to the person who buys it so you have like your online store let's say I were to you know click this engineer shirt right here and um, those tend to sell pretty well you click that like basically saying I went to college and got an engineering degree and then you um, then once you do that you get paid Teespring takes a small commission out of that and then they will print the shirt and pack it and ship it to the customer so you don't have to do any of the hard part 
So there you go. You just have to design it. So those are three great artistic type sites. Another thing you can do is data entry slash virtual assistant type work, uh, contract type work. So you work on your own time whenever you want. There's a lot of websites that help with this now. One would be micro workers allowing you to do data entry type stuff. You'll just be typing. You'll be uh, categorizing things, taking surveys, answering questions about websites and stuff like that. Um, you can see all the different things that they cover as far as their services on the home page. Uh, if you want to do that, if you want to translate uh, audio into text, meaning you listen to a video, you listen to a podcast or an interview, and you turn it into a text form, then you can do transcription work at a site like transcribeme.com. And then you would just click join our team on the join as a transcriptionist page. Also, you can do actual virtual assistant work. There's a jobs board for this type of work at virtualassistance.com where you can go and find the latest work here on the right side, people hiring in the US or a specific city. And all you do is you help them by basically following a set of instructions Typically, you will send email uh, for people, you will schedule appointments, you will research, stuff like that. So very easy stuff for people that just don't have time to do it. You can be an educator as well. This is a great way to start your first business. There's a lot of platforms for this type of stuff. One is iTutor, where you tutor a subject to a student in ages kindergarten through 12th grade. And you can teach them all kinds of different subjects, different types of math, science, you know, history, language arts, etc. Um, so you can tutor them using like a Skype method where you do like a video chat. Or you can do something where it makes more passive income where you sell a course. You put it into short videos and then you sell the course itself and people can go through it and complete the course to learn how to do something. That would be udemy.com is one of the biggest sites for that. They take a uh, commission for helping you get sales or you can drive traffic directly to your course link and then you keep a bigger commission. If you do that, if you get the traffic to the, if you get the buyer to your link yourself. So they help you get more sales and they allow you to host your courses on the Udemy website. So you don't have to have your own website. And another way you can educate people is to sell eBooks. So you can go to kdp.amazon.com, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. That way people can download eBooks. You keep 70% royalties, as you can see here, um, from countries like the US, Canada, UK, Germany, India, etc. So you can do nonfiction, fiction, however you want to do it, and educate people that way. Or just entertain them with your writing. Another thing you can do is be a consultant or a coach. So you help people get a certain result, whether it's fitness, whether it's their love life, whether it's you know business, etc. So a lot of times people who are coaches, they will create their own website. So when you go to my website at selfmadesuccess.com, you can go to start a blog. And that will show you how to set up a WordPress blog in three steps. And it'll kind of walk you through that, show you screenshots, etc. cetera. Um, so if you want to start your own website, there's a way to do that fairly easily. If you want to do like a freelancing website and have your services on there, Upwork is the one I recommend because they merged with another major freelancing site. And so they are probably the biggest one out there now. So Upwork would be a great place. You just create a profile and become a freelancer and look for jobs available based on your expertise. You might help them, you know, get to a certain amount of traffic or whatever. Or you can just answer questions for a um, for a specific amount of money. So like if you're a mechanic or you're a doctor or a vet or electrician, uh, you're good with computers, you're a lawyer, whatever. You can answer questions about your expertise or give advice in a certain situation on justanswer.com and get paid for everything 
every time you give a good answer to a question, those people pay you for it. So it's like a better version of like Yahoo Answers or Quora. Also, you can be a video creator. So YouTube is obviously one of the best places to create videos. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm a big fan of YouTube. I do a lot of videos on there. Um, if you want to create a channel, make sure you're signed in with your Gmail account. Go click on this little circle in the top right corner. Go to your settings. Go to create a new channel. And it'll walk you through that. Um, another thing you can do is try Daily Motion, which is kind of a lesser known version of uh, you know video content. It's kind of like YouTube, just less, less people use it. But you can also get paid from ads just like YouTube as well. So you might even post your videos on both of them. And twitch.tv is for gamers. So if you want to go to twitch.tv, you can create an account and you get paid based on people who watch your stuff and pay subscriptions to be on Twitch. So it could even make you more money than doing a gaming channel on YouTube. It just kind of depends on how you do it. But people can watch you live, they can watch your recordings, whatever. And then there is like a lender or a renter type of uh, business. So a few examples or a few platforms where you could do this. If you have a cool house um, in a nice destination type of city, then people will pay you good money to stay there for a certain amount per night. So instead of them paying for a hotel, they might want the authentic experience of staying in a place that is more like, you know, a representation of the city and the culture of that area. You can also do tours and stuff like that for people as well um, if you want to, which they call experiences. But this is on Airbnb.com. If you have a cabin in the woods or if you have a, um, you know, guest quarters in your home or you want to rent out your actual home while you're on vacation whatever you can do that with airbnb and it's kind of like a hotel experience but it's peer-to-peer -peer. so you would be uh, becoming a host by clicking here where it says become a host in the top right if you want to do the same type thing with your car let people drive your porsche for a day or let people drive your truck for a couple days whatever you can list it and people can drive it. You have uh, insurance by Liberty Mutual that covers anything that might happen. And you can do that through Turo.com. You can see um, all kinds of cars on here for all kinds of rates where you can drive them uh, when you're not using the car. And if you have a boat, you can do borrowaboat.com where you can list your boat by going to the top up here and it allows people to kind of rent out your boat for the day for a certain rate in a peer-to-peer -peer type of platform. So that's it for this video. If you felt like this was helpful, please like and subscribe so I can create more videos like this for you. Also, if you want to let me know what you thought about the video or um, share something you'd like me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and get your feedback. And I will get the links to all of these platforms that will help you start your business on the show notes page at selfmadesuccess.com. I'll also have a link in the video description to that page as well. Other than that, I hope the video was helpful. I hope it answered your questions, and I'll see you in the next one.